Hallelujah. We are living in the country where this country w- w- was a living in the uh, 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 atrocity and the thing that we can't even explain. How can a human being be uh, 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 in that kind of uh, uh, behavior, treating other human being like a, a slave or like an animal? Hallelujah. Most of the time, if you see people that are they have been a, a, a suffering uh, uh, in this country for what has been happening in this country. When you see those people speaking, you don't understand. Because you, 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 you didn't live what they have lived. You didn't see what they have seen. And those people, they can value the freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you really understand the freedom that you have now in Jesus Christ? Do you really understand the prayer that was paid at the cross of Calvary? Hallelujah. Only people that are maybe they have been like in an occult, they can understand what does it mean being freed by Jesus Christ. When you do something and they say that if you do this, you're going to die. And you are like somebody that you don't have your, your freedom because you know that if I cross the line, I'm going to die. But a freedom has been given to us. Jesus Christ has paid the price for you and me. Do you understand the meaning of uh, what Jesus Christ did for you and me this night? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, our Passover. Amen. I want you to open your Bible in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Amen. Are we there? Ephesians chapter 2. And this is what the word of God says. And you were dead in the trespasses and the sin. I want you to understand where we're coming from. For you to value what is the freedom and what is the price that Jesus Christ paid for you and me. For you and me to sit in this place and are calling upon the name of the Lord. Even calling ourselves that we are Christian. Hallelujah. This is a miracle. Most of the time we are looking for a a, a thing that we can see and we can touch. And I really understand. And this is as as a human being. We always want to see even. And this is even when you go to Asia. You see that they do have a God that they can see and they can touch. In Asia, they do have a God. And those God, they can see them and they can touch. Have you seen Buddha? Yes or not? Have you seen a moment? Yes or not? So because these people, they believe that only when we can sin, then we can believe. But we do have a, an invisible God, but are doing visible things. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand where we're coming from. Because if uh, really you understand, and then you're going to start to value, when we, sp- we speak about a, a, a Passover, you're going to understand what is the meaning of Passover and why we should celebrate the Passover? And you were dead in the trespass and the sins in which you once walk following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sands of disobedience. Among whom we all once live in the passions of our flesh, Carrying out the desire of the body and the mind. And were by nature children of a rap. Like the rest of mankind. Hallelujah. This is the mean that we were also like all the people that we can see the pagan. And that these people, there is nothing that they can wait. Only the punishment of God. Verse 4. But the God being rich in mercy. Somebody said that by God being rich in mercy. Because of the great love with which he loves us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. 
By grace, you have been saved. Hallelujah. Do you understand that it is by grace that we are saved? Do you understand that you didn't pay nothing for you to sit where you are? Do you understand that you did do nothing for you to deserve the life that you have? For you to deserve the salvation. You didn't do nothing. Only by the grace of God. And verse 6. Verse 6. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in the Christ Jesus. That's why I said that you may be seated in a heavenly place. Because as a chosen one, as the son of God, although you are sitting where you are, but I want you to understand that you are sitting in a heavenly place. <laughs> Verse 7. So that in the coming ages, he might he may show the immeasurable riches of his grace in the kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Come on, give him a shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I want to ask to understand that uh, Beloved, we are not um, different from all the people that they are not saved. We were living like them, but a God by his mercy, God by his love, God has saved us. Hallelujah. And this night, we are talking to the people, the prince and the princess. We are talking to the kings and the queens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of God. And that's why that we say that uh, the celebration that we will be having, we celebrate a new life, a new beginning. Amen. So let us go from the beginning. Amen. This feast of, uh, I want to say tabernacle, it's not the feast of tabernacle. <laughs> the feast of uh, Passover, it is uh, one of the feasts that is the foundation of uh, all the feasts of the, the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the feast of uh, 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 Passover is the feast where our life started. Where the beginning started. Hallelujah. And uh, we're going to see in the word of God, when we, uh, uh, we're going to read uh, Exodus chapter 12, you see that uh, God is uh, saying and is telling his people that uh, this month is going to be the first. Hallelujah. It's going to be the first, which means that uh, God is about to do something new in your life. God is about to do something that uh, he has never done, but I think that uh, he has already prepared for you. Hallelujah. So we do have, in the feast of the Lord, we do have seven feasts of the Lord. When you go and read uh, Leviticus chapter uh, 23, you see that uh, there are seven feasts of the Lord. Amen. Can we open our Bible? We just want to read uh, some verses in uh, Leviticus chapter 20, uh, 23. Leviticus chapter 23. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the people of Israel and say to them, these are the appointed feasts of the Lord that you shall proclaim as a holy convocation. They are my appointed feasts. Hallelujah. The first thing that I want you to understand and to know that the feast of, uh, the, the, feast of the Lord, they are the, 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 saint, the, the, the holy convocation. They are God himself. He has a, a, a called us to come and to celebrate. So they are the feast of the Lord. They are not our feast. Hallelujah. They are the feast of the Lord. And that's why they call them holy convocations. Verse 2. Verse 3. Six days shall work be done. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath of a solemn rest. A holy convocation, you shall do not work. It is a Sabbath to the Lord in all your dwelling places. So, this is like an introduction. 
the Sabbath or the, the, the seventh day that are the Lord, uh, uh, the, the, the day of a Sabbath, and the Sabbath is not as we, uh, we uh, understand it, it's not the uh, Sunday, but the Sabbath is the Saturday. Hallelujah. So which means that uh, in uh, this day, God, this is uh, something that uh, is happening every single week. And uh, God has uh, instituted uh, this day for us to remember that uh, God has uh, done the work and has uh, finished the work. So we may rest. Hallelujah. But I don't think that uh, God, because he was uh, tired, and then uh, God rested. No. Because he has accomplished everything. And then uh, God decided uh, this day. Even yourself, you're going to rest. Hallelujah. So when we go down, we find out that there are the, uh, uh, other uh, uh, feet that are coming down. And I'm going to just uh, mention it, but uh, we're not going to spend time or, uh, on all these uh, feasts of the Lord. But uh, you can go by yourself and uh, reading uh, Leviticus chapter 23, you're going to find them. So the first one was uh, the Passover. Amen. And the second one is uh, um, the Feast of uh, Unleavened Bread. Amen. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread was uh, 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 coming immediately after the Feast of uh, 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 Passover. So they were like uh, celebrating two feasts in the same time. Hallelujah. According to the scripture, the Feast of Passover shall happen every 14th day of uh, 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 the first month. And the, the next day, the 15th, is going to be the feast of uh, unleavened bread. Hallelujah. And, the, and the, the, the third one, also the feast of uh, the first fruit. So you can find it um, in uh, Leviticus. And I said, so the, the, the first of a uh, first fruit. And the fourth one, the feast of uh, Pentecost. Hallelujah. And the fifth one, the Feast of Harvest. And the sixth one, the Feast of Atonement. And the seventh and the last, the Feast of Tabernacle. Hallelujah. But as I said, we're going to spend time only in the Feast of Passover. But there is something that is the common ground of all the Feast of God. All of them, all the people that must come in the Feast of God, they must bring an offering. Hallelujah. All of them, the seven feasts of the Lord, you must, and that's why God said that you should never present yourself before God empty and because every time that we come together and even now in our Sunday service, it's a celebration. Hallelujah. And that's why God said that you should never present yourself empty ended before God. Amen. But all of these uh, uh, seven feasts of the Lord, we can summarize them in a three feasts of the Lord. And this we found it in Deuteronomy chapter 16. When you, let us open our Bible in Deuteronomy chapter 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Amen. And the word of God said that observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover to the Lord your God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord your God brought you out of Egypt by night. And you shall offer the Passover sacrifice to the Lord your God from the flock of the head and the place that the Lord will choose to make his name dwell there. Verse 3, you shall eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days you shall eat it with unleavened bread, the bread of affliction. For you came out of the land of Egypt in haste, that all the days of your life you may remember the day when you came out of the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. So when you read going down, you find out that there is only three 
feast of the Lord. But I want us to understand that God instituted the feast for us to keep the remembrance. God has put the feast for us to remember where we're coming from. Hallelujah. And for that, I want you to open your Bible in the book of Isaiah chapter 46. Gonna read verse 9 and verse 10. Isaiah 46, or verse 9 and verse 10. And this is where the word of God gets. Remember the former things of old. So the, the feast, God has put on un- place the feast for us to remember the things of old. Amen. For us to remember where we're coming from. And for children of God, and uh, I like the, the culture of uh, the Jewish people because uh, since even Abraham, these people that are still practicing and, and doing the same thing that uh, they were doing and, and what God has commanded them to do. And that's why you see that uh, um, they're still keeping the culture and they're still keeping whatever God has commanded them to do. For I am God and there is no other There is no other. I'm God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things are not yet done. Hallelujah. I like this. Because God has the ability of declaring the end. Although we are in the beginning. Hallelujah. So which means that your end has been already declared, has been already prophesied. God has already said a word. God has already released something that you should see. Don't worry for your end. No matter the way that you have started your life, no matter what you are living, I want you to understand that our God has already set, has already prepared the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. My counsel Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will accomplish all my purpose. Hallelujah. So, whatever God has established, whatever God has declared and I will do in your life, God will accomplish it. And it is for this reason that God wants us to keep the remembrance. Hallelujah. It is for this reason that God has put on place the feast of the Lord. Hallelujah. For us to remember that uh, where we're coming from, what God has done in our life. And we know also, as we are at the beginning, but we know already the end. How it's going to finish. Hallelujah. We know how it's going to finish. Amen. Because God is on our side. Amen. So, the Passover is a... uh, 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 as I said, uh, to the foundation of uh, uh, all the feasts of, of God. And uh, that is God said that uh, this will be for you the beginning. Amen. And uh, the Passover, now our day, we can uh, consider the Passover as our Independence Day. Our Freedom Day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is our freedom day. Because in this day, somebody paid the price for you and me. Amen. So I want to ask this night to understand what is the meaning of this table that we do have. And how Jesus Christ fit in the Passover. Hallelujah. So I want to ask to understand. I'm not going to go to more details, but I just want to ask to understand how Jesus Christ is fitting in the Passover that we are celebrating. And that's why Paul said that Jesus Christ is our Passover. Amen. So let us open our Bibles in the book of Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, we're going to read from from verse 1. 
here. Uh, this is amazing. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Hallelujah. God is about to establish something new in your life. God is, is about to start a new beginning in your life. God is about to start something new in your family. God is about to start something new in your finances. Hallelujah. I want you to understand the word of God, but with a revelation. Amen. And he said that, verse 3. Tell all the congregation of Israel that are on the 10th day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses. A lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of a person, according to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Do you, do you see something here? There is something here. The instruction that God has given to Moses and Aaron, he didn't say that you should, should take the lambs. But he said, a lamb. Hallelujah. Because this was the only the shadow of a things to come. Only one lamb shall save us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only one God shall be our salvation. Your lamb shall be without a blemish, a male. A year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the God. Amen. So now let us go and find out how Jesus Christ is a fitting in this scripture. Amen. So the, 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 the instruction that has been given to uh, uh, Moses and Aaron said that uh, this lamb shall be unblemished. Amen. So the first characteristic, unblemished lamb. Amen. We open our Bible in the uh, book of uh, um, uh, first letter of Peter, chapter 1, verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without a blemish or spot. Hallelujah. So, Jesus Christ was the perfect offering. Jesus Christ was the perfect lamb that God has prepared for you and me for our deliverance, for our freedom. So, Jesus Christ is our Passover. Amen. So the lamb supposed to be unblemished and, uh, and uh, um, Jesus Christ also, as we read in this scripture, we saw that Jesus Christ also was a lamb without any spot, any, any, uh, any blemish. A amen. The second one, the bread. Amen. Let us open our Bible. In the book of uh, um, uh, Exodus, and we're going to see that this, they should eat it with uh, the bread. But how was that bread? Let us go back to Exodus chapter 12. Can I have verse um, 5? No, verse, the, the verse that are going up, down. And uh, going down, sorry. And you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill the lamb at the um, twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doors posts and the lentil of the houses in which they eat it. Hallelujah. I want to say something 
regarding the blood. Amen. We saw, may God bless Pastor Edward and all the people that have been working for us to have that picture that is there. Amen. God instructed Moses and Aaron and said that you shall put the blood at the doorpost of your door. Hallelujah. That was only the instruction that he gave them. So which means that either you are Egyptian or you are Israelite, if you hear the instruction and you follow the instruction, when the angel of death will come, you will be preserved. Hallelujah. And that this is also telling us the salvation plan of God. That a God, a soul of the world that he gave, not only for the Jews, not for only for the, the, the people of Israel, but for all the entire humanity. So, if, uh, let us say that the Israelite didn't put the blood at the doorpost, the angel of death, when he will come, they're going to be destroyed. But uh, now, God wants you to put that blood, the spring of blood, in your heart. Hallelujah. Let us go. Verse 8. Then shall eat the flesh that at night roasted on the fire with unleavened bread. Hallelujah. And the bitter herbs that I shall eat it. Hallelujah. So the bread, if you know the, the unleavened bread, the way that the, the Jewish people that they, they used to do the unleavened bread, it's like a paper. Hallelujah. But in that paper, you see that there is a, um, like a, something like a, um, the hole. There is a small hole in those bread. Hallelujah. And what uh, that, those small uh, is also the symbol of uh, Jesus Christ being a peace. Hallelujah. Being a peace in his uh, hand and his uh, feet. Which means that uh, the body that was uh, broken, the body that was uh, put on the cross, through him, we can be healed. Hallelujah. So, they were also the bread. And uh, this bread was not any kind of bread, but was unleavened bread. And this they shall eat this unleavened bread for seven days. Hallelujah. And we find it now in the New Testament. We find it in John chapter 6, verse 51. John chapter 6, verse 51. John chapter 6, verse 51. I am the living bread that I came down from heaven. If anyone eat of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ was also that bread that the, the people of Israel were eating. Hallelujah. So on the table, as the, they set up the table, as we see this table, the bread shall, uh, should be there to represent the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And this night, I want you to understand that if you are sick in your body, you can be healed because Jesus Christ said that unless you eat my flesh and you drink my blood, you don't have life in you. Hallelujah. So, that was uh, um, um, the, 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 the second thing that I want to share with you and to, to let us see that uh, Jesus Christ is our Passover. And the, the third one, the wine. Hallelujah. So, let, let not fool yourself that uh, they were drinking the, the juice. No, it was the wine. Hallelujah. It was the wine. Amen. Don't change the scripture. The scripture says that it was uh, the wine. And we know the process of the wine. Amen. So, they were also having the wine at the table. But uh, that wine on the table, they were like a fourfold of a cups of wine. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I want you to follow me carefully in this place. So, according to Exodus chapter 6, I want us to go to Exodus chapter 6, verse 6 to verse 7. And the word of God said, Say therefore to the people of Israel, this is God speaking to Moses and an error. I am the Lord and I will bring you the first thing. I am the Lord. I will bring you out of, out of from under the burden of the Egyptian. The first thing. Hallelujah. The second thing. And I will deliver you from your slavery to them. The third thing. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with a great act of a judgment. And verse 7. I will take you to be my people and I will be your God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God who has brought you out from under the burden of Egyptian. Hallelujah. Four things. And at the table, as the Jewish people, they were celebrating the, the, uh, uh, the Passover, they had always four cups of wines. Hallelujah. And we see it now when Jesus Christ came, but there is something that is very unusual in this Passover that Jesus Christ celebrated with his disciples, the last one. Open our Bibles in the book of Luke chapter 4. From verse 18. And we know this is the mission of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 4. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives. And the recovering of a sight to the blind, to set a liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Hallelujah. So when you go now, read the same scripture in uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 61, you see that there is a something that Jesus Christ has a skip in this place. Hallelujah. Can we go to Isaiah chapter 61, from verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Hallelujah. And this is the thing that Jesus Christ has escaped in the day of vengeance of our God. You don't understand. Hallelujah. I'll make you understand. The Passover, Jesus Christ came to redeem us. He came to save us. He didn't come for judgment. Hallelujah. And that's why when Jesus Christ opened the book and started reading, he skipped this place of a vengeance, of a judgment, because the first come of Jesus Christ is for the redemption. Hallelujah. The first come of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ came for us to be saved. He came for salvation. But the second one, when he will be coming, is going to be for judgment. Because now, you know the good news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, our Passover. Amen. So, as I said, the four cups, the, the first one, it was for sanctification. The second one, it was for judgment. And the, the, uh, um, uh, the third one, it was for redemption. And the fourth, it was for blessing. But as Jesus Christ came for, not to judge us, but to redeem us, to save us, he just skipped the third cup. Hallelujah. And the second cup, which was the cup of judgment. Amen. And we will see it, if we open our Bibles in the book of Luke, 
chapter 22, verse 14. From verse 14. Luke chapter. And when the hour came, he reclined a table and the apostle with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. But we, we can still eating and drinking. And he took a cup and when he has given thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the, 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 the wine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and when he has given thanks, he broke, and he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I just want to um, stop there. How Jesus Christ became our Passover. Because he said, do this in remembrance of me. And the feast of Passover was also designed for us to remember something. Hallelujah. Verse 20. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten. So you see that there was a two cup here. Have you paid attention? That uh, it was not only one cup. It was two cups. Hallelujah. Saying this cup that is put out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Hallelujah. And uh, going down, but uh, behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. Hallelujah. So, the, the first cup was a cup of uh, Was the cup of a sanctification because Jesus Christ had become our sanctification. The second one is that was the cup of a judgment, but Jesus Christ didn't come to judge us, to condemn us. He came to save us. And the third one was the cup of a redemption. And the fourth one, the cup of a blessing. This table, the table of blessing. And that's why Jesus Christ, when he came, when you read in Galatians chapter 3, you find out that Paul is telling the people of Galatians that curse is only the one he was put on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So which means that we now, as the people of God, the, the, the people that Jesus Christ has redeemed, we are Enjoying the blessings. Hallelujah. So, I want to finish this and we're going to share the word of God. We're going to share the, the, this table. I want you to open your Bible in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 10. And we're going to read from verse 5 to verse 22. Hebrews chapter 10, and I'm asking the people that are going to serve with me at the table to come. And the word of God says, Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ was the perfect Passover, the body of Christ or the perfect Passover because the lamb or the God could not save us. Hallelujah. Carrying down. In a burnt offering and a sin offering, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I have come to do your will. Oh God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he said above, you have a neither desire nor taken a pleasure in a sacrifice and the offering and the burnt offering and the sin offering. 
these are offered according to the law. Then he added, Behold, I have come to do, to do your will. He does away with the first in order to establish the second. Thank you for watching. Please connect with us on Facebook at Logos Rema Christian Ministries South Africa and also subscribe on our YouTube channel at Logos Rema Christian Ministries SA so that you may always be updated with the Word of God. For offering, tithes and donations, the details will appear as follows. You can do an electronic transfer to our bank account. We bank with First National Bank. Or alternatively, you can send us an e-wallet on plus two seven eight one five two seven one zero zero five. We also have a prayer line, so please send us your prayer requests via WhatsApp or normal call on plus two seven eight one five two seven one zero zero five. Thank you and stay blessed.